And my last case, what page is that? All right, State of Nevada versus Sergio Rubio, 316892. This matter is on today for sentencing. Good morning, Your Honor. Tyler Smith for the state. All right, um, and Ms. Ballou? Your Honor, is it? Yes? my lawyer isn't here. She's, uh, I think she's had a problem. Okay. Well, she was in here. All right, she's present. Okay, this matter is on for sentencing today, and I understand you guys wanted to have some chat about Miss um, Ballou about the, the button or the pen first, correct? Um, if I'm allowed in here with the pen on, I have no issues. Well, no, no I, you're not, um, but I understand I, I wasn't making you, as I told you in chambers, was going to take it off before you had an opportunity to come in court and make any representations that you wanted to make. Your Honor, I don't have any representations. I don't believe that this is a political matter. This is an issue about criminal justice. I believe a courtroom is the proper place to make issues about criminal justice. I, this is not political speech. It's not supporting a particular candidate, and it's not political speech. I don't believe that the DAs have been made to take off DA buttons. I don't believe that marshals have been made to stop wearing the black bands when, some, when there's been a death. This is not an issue. This is a First Amendment issue, and I... Well, but you acknowledge that, I mean, the Supreme Court has kind of declined in the past to, to enforce some type of First Amendment protection for folks wearing political things into courtrooms, correct? Your Honor, I, mean, I... If you don't want me in this courtroom with right. this pin on, I will not come in this courtroom with this pin on, which is why I stood outside okay. the whole time. Okay. I'm not trying to disrespect the, the, you. I, no, 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 no. I know that. I know that. And that's why when I talked to you in chambers this morning, I said, look, I'm not, I'm not holding anybody in contempt. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm not ordering a marshal to take a pen or whatever. I asked you if you were going to take it off, and you said you were not going to take it I off. I did. And it's a Black Lives Matter uh, pen, correct? Yes. Just so we're clear on the record. All right. Mr. Cohn? Your Honor, I apologize. I don't want to code. I know decorum is an issue right here, but I hope I can still address the court. You can still address the court without your jacket. Thank you. Um, when I was a young person, there was a case, Cone versus California. It's spelled improperly, it's C-O-H-E-N versus California. <laughs> um, from 1971, it was about the draft, and it was about exactly this issue, about wearing something that said F the draft in a California courtroom. It's a U.S. Supreme Court case. It's found at, it's 1971, it's found at 403 U.S. 15, and this issue has been addressed. Um, and it is proper to have that in a courtroom, that the courtroom is such an important part of American society. Um, and, and, and I really do agree with, I mean, I read the letter from the Metropolitan Police Department, and, and, and I found it very troubling, because this, this isn't propaganda. And, and understand, this has nothing to do with a letter from yeah. Metro. Okay. And I think your client thought she was named in, in a letter from Metro, or not your client, I'm sorry. Your attorney thought that she was named, sorry, Erica, she was named in a letter from Metro. So I had Molly go and find the letter that got sent out. There, nobody's named in any letter, neither I, you I or also. there was another I, young lady you mentioned. I, I have seen the letter since. Nobody's mentioned in a letter. But this, right. this precedes that. I have always been of the mindset, and we've asked, even today, today, without anybody even bringing it up, we told family members that came in on Mr. Getting's murder case, inappropriate, cover it up. Um, people, when they come to court, people, no matter who they are, whether they're the public watching court, whether they're witnesses, whether they're defendants, whether they're civil or criminal, have the right to believe that the courtroom is a place that's free of that, in my mind. Um, and I know every judge has the autonomy to run their courtroom the way they want. But, you know, an illegal immigrant that's here for sentencing shouldn't have to look around and see people wearing vote Trump, build the wall t-shirts or something and think, you know what, is the court influenced by that? Is that what people think? They want to throw me out of the country or am I going to get a fair shake, right? Um, same thing with this kind of button, same thing with people coming into court in my mind saying I want to influence the judge and I'm going to bring in signs which we've had, buttons which we've had, pins, t-shirts. You know, capital punishment is the way to go, death penalty for this guy, or here's my family members, all that. I mean, that makes people uncomfortable. Like, they're not, they're not here for what the court is here for, which is simply justice. Not everybody's 
personal opinions or protests or anything. And I get having passion about that. Wear it in the hallways, wear it in front of the courthouse, demonstrate, protest, use your voice. But that's not what's supposed to occur in a courtroom. When we're not here on a petition about a movement or a protest or anything like that, we're here to dispense justice on a criminal calendar of cases. And that's why I think it's inappropriate. And that's why I did ask if she would be willing to, to, to remove it, and, and she said she wasn't, which I respect. So. And so I, think, I guess then the question is what, what's next? Because you know, when, when I talked to Ms. Ballou about this, and I realized that when, when police officers come into courtroom, after a police officer is killed and they have the black uh, band across the badge, it is out of respect because police officers' lives do matter, and, and people are emotionally um, affected by that. And, 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 and now there's a different discussion that, yes, police lives matter, but so do black lives matter. We just had another killing of an unarmed black man um, over the weekend, and, and, and seeing the video is so troubling. And so I understand why this interest in, in lives mattering is so important to people. And I can understand the court not wanting political buttons in here. I, I completely agree with that. But I think that when someone is speaking out about death, that's a little different. It's a little closer to home. And I understand why Ms. Ballou feels passionate about that button, as I understand when law enforcement, when law, I can't say it, law enforcement officers are killed, right. how much it affects that community. I really do. I've been a law enforcement officer. I get it. And so I, I, I would just hope we could go through with this sentencing. Um, I, I know I have, I, I have absolutely no concern that the court is affected by this discussion whatsoever. No. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going anywhere near there. But I think uh, it's just for our, for our client, I, I know you're not affected by it, but I think uh, we should go forward with the sentencing. I think she should be allowed to wear the button. If we want to have a meeting um, among the judges and, and, and in our office or, or, or NACJ, because I know there's a lot of people from NACJ behind me that feel very strongly about that, I, I think we should do that. I just don't think in one case it's a good idea to have this discussion. I think it's a, a broader issue. But here's the thing. I would never, and, and you know, during the entire six some odd years that I've been the chief judge, I try very hard, whether it's your issues or the DA's issues or the jail or the prison or parole and probation, to find ways to harmoniously deal with issues that affect us all. Always. Um, this, though, in terms of running an individual courtroom, I would never pretend to tell any other judge what they can or cannot do or what they should or should not do in regard to this type of an issue. Um, I wouldn't do that. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's my place to do that. If other judges think it's okay to have that in their courtrooms, I respect that. That's their decision to make. But as I said, I think, you know what, that's not the purpose of coming into court. And I think Erica would admit, when we were talking this morning in chamber, she was saying, well, I think it is appropriate here because this is where there is disparate treatment of African Americans and harsher penalties on African Americans. I mean, that's it, it, it's making it a political statement that I wear this in protest of how the court is treating minority defendants. Um, and that's not what this is about. Uh, that's not what dealing with justice on an individual case should be about. And no, I'm not, I'm not prejudiced against her or her client because she's wearing the button. But I think that I have been pretty fair. I don't even ask defense attorneys, even though defense attorneys were always the ones to raise the issue of impropriety of buttons and t-shirts in courtrooms, because of fear of influence, I don't even ask you to raise that issue. I just tell my marshal, if you see those things coming in, tell people they're inappropriate and to leave or take them off or cover them up. So now that I have defense attorneys that are kind of doing that, that is, is equity and fairness in my mind. I'm asking the same things of them that I ask of anybody else. Please leave any kind of political or opinion protest statements outside the courtroom. Let's come in and let's do our business and dispense justice in our cases and then take those things back outside the courtroom um, where they're more appropriate to be uh, produced or discussed or displayed or anything like that. And Your um, Honor, I um, do believe, and I would never wear this in front of a jury. I'm not trying to influence oh, yeah. anyone or anything like that. And I'm not doing it. I. I wouldn't ask you to ask a, a 
family member who's there to support you know their their family i believe in free speech in all of its you know permutations i'm not going to try and abridge anyone's free speech even if i disagree with it i wouldn't ask you to do that i spoke to norm reed who the family was on this morning he didn't want the, them to necessarily you shouldn't have, have to ask me That's but i point. don't i i took an oath to support the constitution all of the constitution not parts that i agree with my oath is to protect everyone's free speech even if i disagree with it so i wouldn't ask and norm said he wouldn't have asked for those family members to have to cover up their t-shirts but you know a lot of times when issues come before the court about recusing and i know you guys understand this it's not about whether there's an actual conflict that causes a judge to feel like they can't be fair in a case it's about the appearance of the impropriety right we all understand as attorneys my obligation to kind of independently review things but a lot of times when you're talking about that appearance it's how does it appear to the public is the public going to think, despite your ability, Judge, knowing you, your ability to be fair in a case, is there something that's occurred in a case that would cause the public to question that? Because they don't know everything about it. And so judges need to recuse if there's an appearance that, they, that they're doing anything that could be improper. It's the same way on issues like this. It's not all about, I don't think you're malicious at all. Don't get me wrong on that. And wearing it, and I don't have any problem with the reasons behind you wanting to wear it. But the idea is for everybody else that comes into court to not feel like they should be uncomfortable here or they're targeted in any fashion by somebody else's displays or signs or t-shirts or whatever it may be. They should feel like I'm going to come into court and the judge isn't going to be staring at photos and signs and buttons. They're going to listen to people's reasoned arguments and look at evidence and give me a fair disposition of my case. And if anything has the appearance of affecting people's ability to have that comfort level, then I don't think that's right. I, I don't think that's right. I, I don't think that's what a courtroom stands for. Well, I, I agree with that, Your Honor. I know. So, yeah, I am going to ask her to remove it or to have somebody else handle the case. And I'd ask for my cases to be reassigned from you because I am not comfortable giving my case to someone else to handle, and I'm also not comfortable abridging my free speech rights. I'm not going to recuse off my cases. Under the judicial canons, I've got an obligation to hear my cases. I don't have any conflict with you. I'm just asking you the same thing as I would ask somebody that's inappropriate to wear in court. You got to put something else on. Um, those clothing items are inappropriate, or you can't wear your hat in court. I mean, this this is no different than those types of things. I'm just asking you to co conform to the courtroom's decorum. Um, it's not a conflict with you or your clients or anything. So no, I'm not going to recuse off cases that I'm obligated to hear that get assigned to me. Um, if you want to have an opportunity, I'll. I'll pass the case for a second if you guys want to chat about it or I'll pass it to another day if you want to chat about it any further yes I would ask for all right Phil's kind of staring at me right there. I have no objection to that all right um, I'll continue it over to next week Is that okay um, I'm in trial next week your honor right. you want me to do it on Thursday we can do Thursday all right we'll pass it over to Thursday's calendar that's this Thursday at 9 a.m. What is this Thursday? It's the 22nd. And Your Honor, we didn't have just we didn't have um, place in a notice for a victim speaker. Um, I don't think we got the paperwork. Is it okay if I ask the victim if she'd like to come back on that day and make a statement? Or? Uh, look, I I would probably be disinclined to allow her to speak because otherwise we would have gone forward with sentencing today. And if she hadn't okay. been noticed, she wouldn't have been. I mean, she can always write letters and everything like anybody. I understand, else. Your Honor. Thank you. All right. All right. We'll see you on Thursday, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Was that it?